And then these are the two stripped leads right here. There's one here, there's one here. Let's see what we get. Open. Okay, so that's the problem. The uh, audio output transformer is uh, blown on the primary. It's uh, burned through an open circuit. So that's pulling down the, all the plate voltage on 41 and all the other plates as well. Shutting down the audio section and basically the whole rest of the radio. Okay, so uh, I need to see what I can do about uh, either uh, finding a audio trans uh, output transformer or seeing what else I can do. Uh, that's about all I can do until I get that problem fixed. All right. Hope I can get it fixed. This is a neat radio. Okay, I'm working on getting the audio uh, output transformer off of the uh, speaker system. See if I can get this out of here and see if I can inspect it. I don't. I thought that was like where a bug had eaten through it. Maybe it's not. I don't know. We'll just get this thing off in here and we can uh, see what we have. Let's get this thing off. These little tangs bend up. If we can do that without shoving it through the speaker coil, that'd be a uh, cone. That'd be fantastic. Let's see, I need to get, the, get it started to come loose. Are you all holding your breath to see I'm about to shove this through the speaker? There we go. Thanks for hoping it all went well. It worked. Okay, so there's that part off. Thing you need to do is get in there and desolder this from both the uh, spiel coil connection and the uh, wires to the uh, uh, voice coil. I'll bring you back when I get all that done. It's going to be some tight work in there. Doesn't look burned. That looks like I'm off to try to see if I can find a replacement. And I'm getting an open circuit on the uh, secondary as well. So this thing uh, looks, looks toast. All right, I'll check the voice coil next. And this is the resistance going through the voice coil. So there's a saving grace. So it looks like the speaker and the field coil, well, the uh, voice coil and the uh, field coil are okay. And the audio output transformer is toast. So I looked at the prices of replacement audio transformers online and I thought, gee, that's more than I pay for this radio. So what I thought to like to do is maybe see what I could find. So I looked at where that hole was and I dug through the uh, wrappings and found that the lead was taped in, but it wasn't anything connected to it. I went and did some searching around. So let me zoom you in and you can take a look at something here.
Now I don't think you can see that real well. I'm going to try to put this behind it to see if you can kind of make out. You can see a wire there. That is the magnetic winding on the primary side. You kind of see it against the screwdriver kind of setting up a, a shadow on it. So um, I got a blob of solder and, and applied some heat to the end of it to get the enamel off of the end. And then I did a resistance measurement to the other side of the primary. And let's see how that looks. I'm going to zoom you out. Hook this up to the other primary lead. Okay, I'm going to give myself a little something to push against here. Five hundred ohms. So if I can resolder that primary winding to that and get that resecured in here, the primary may be back in order. I'll recheck the secondary to see if it's also a problem, but it's a much thicker diameter wire since it has to handle higher current. Soldering to those whisker wires is not exactly easy. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but it might be worth a try. All right, let's check the uh, secondary side to see what we get with that. So from end to end, which would be what would go to the voice coil, is reading open. Let's make sure I'm hooked up right. Yep. So it's open from there to there. Uh, let's try from the center tap to that left side. Okay, getting getting uh, almost an ohm from the uh, this left side to the center tap, and then let's try from the center tap to the right side. Nothing. So the open circuit is on this the right side of the center tap as we're looking at it from the bottom. So I may also dig into there and see if there's. Uh, a bug had got a bite out of that one as well. And we'll just just take a quick look. Maybe we can just find where the either the uh, the connection came apart one way or the other, and maybe we can reconnect it. Be worth a try. I was looking at the secondary of the output transformer, and I saw the three terminals, and I just got to gleefully going along, saying, "Okay, there's a center tap," and so I checked the the resistance between here and here, and got what you'd basically expect one ohm across the secondary of an audio output transformer, but then I didn't get anything from here to here. And I thought, well, maybe I got a burned out lead in through here. So I, I started digging into here, and I opened this, <laughs> open this, don't laugh at me, okay? I opened this thing up, and I'm digging around, and I find the, the lead here as it comes off and goes to that center terminal here. I said, well, there's the center tap, and I'm, and I'm looking underneath this thing here, and I can't find any any wire in there at all right and and I'm just still digging around in here digging around in here and I just had to sit back and think wait a minute how could there not even be a wire burned off here and I had to remember wait a minute this isn't a power transformer <laughs> so yeah I went back and looked at the the drawing and they don't show it specifically but you can see right here, there's the voice coil winding. And then you see a winding going the other direction. It's a humbucker for bucking the hum off of the field coil, field winding. And so there's a humbucker in here. And that what we're actually seeing is we're seeing this lead come out and being tied off to that end. In other words, between the humbucker coil that goes into this part and where it ties the voice coil. And they brought it out and they tied it to that third lead like a terminal tie strip. So that's just meant to be 
a tie strip between where the humbucking coil lead comes out and where the uh, voice coil ties onto it. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I, I was complaining about the bugs getting into here, but or whatever it was, but it looks like I did a worse job. But anyway, I'll, I can put this all back together again and glue it down, and let's just not tell anybody about it, right? And then uh, if I can get if I can get that one lead that that burned or broke off here to solder back to that other connection, then we might have this output coil fixed. And we'll see. Anyway, learn something every day. Okay, so here's the lead all cleaned and straightened out and tinned, ready to wrap the uh, magnet wire around it. I've uh, used some fine sandpaper to uh, sand off the epoxy coating off the winding. And now I'll see if I can wrap it around this and get a solder connection and manage to get it back together without ripping it apart. We'll see. Man, talk about nerve-wracking work. So uh, the other lead came off as well. Uh, both lines have broken at least once, uh, but I've sanded back the uh, coating. I put an extension of some slightly heavier wire onto it from uh, some stranded wire I had. And then what I think I'm going to do is epoxy that with a dab of epoxy to the inside of the core to strain relief the, uh, the lines on the winding so they don't get flexed around anymore. And then work my way up to uh, stronger wire until I can... Uh, basically get it strain relieved enough to where it's not going to pull on it too much. All right, getting there, but I've got uh, full uh, full resistance on the primary windings again. And we know the secondary is good, so we're on our way. Okay, so, so far we've got half of this done. I put uh, got this put in here as best I could, and I uh, epoxied this half and got this uh, pretty well strain relief. Originally the cord came out the top, uh, I thought it might be a little bit less in harm's way if it came off the bottom, so I'm trying to do that, and it's that's pretty sturdy. It's not pulling on the winding at all. So you can see this one is still just hanging by literally a thread. So I'm going to see if I can get this one into position and get some epoxy on that and uh, let this one set up. It takes about 24 hours for it to set, so it's been it's been a couple of days since I did this one, and it looks like it's okay. And now I'm going to try to get this one in. I'll check continuity with it again just to make sure it's still okay before I put more epoxy in it. And then we'll see how we get. So just hang on, I'll speed it up. All right, so this first dab is just to secure the end of the wire so that it doesn't move around. You will have noticed that the uh, the actual winding itself that goes, you know, the small wire, uh, I'm trying not to glue directly to it. I put a piece of the original paper over it so that the epoxy doesn't bind it. So if, so if I or somebody else needs to get into this someday, that won't be all epox epoxied shut so they can't do what I'm doing now, trying to get the coil to come back. Uh, they might even be able to unwrap it and take another wrap off of everything to get more wire. But this is just dealing with the wire that exits and the uh, the slightly heavier wire that I added um, to try to uh, get something more substantial to uh, solder to before I got to the wire. Because otherwise it just kept flexing and breaking. And it was just too fragile, uh, at least for me. So this is about just securing the the exit wire down, and uh, I'll put something over the top of it later. 
like I say, this is just to secure it and hold it in place. And I'll put something else over it later to uh, insulate it and so forth. Okay, so that layer of uh, epoxy is uh, on there pretty good. It's, uh, I'll say it's pretty sturdy now. Yeah, so let's clarify the schematic a little bit, right? So the way this is drawn was kind of confusing to me at first because it showed like two lines coming in from the uh, the audio output transformer and two lines coming in from the chassis for a total of four lines. But that four lines is actually here and here. But between here and the speaker, there's like four lines. So it's kind of confusing. And as I mentioned a while ago, the issue comes from the fact that they simplify the schematics such that they have the voice coil and the humbucker tied together within the coil, you know, kind of within this assembly like you wouldn't see it. In reality, it comes out and ties to that third tie point on the secondary side of the audio output coil. So what you really have is you have this, and I've labeled some numbers, and I kind of broke this out a little bit. So 1 to 2 would be 1 and 2 come from the power transformer and then going back to chassis ground. So that goes into the, voice, the field coil assembly. 1 to 2 is field coil. Three to four are two other wires that come into basically the same area electromagnet, and that's the humbucker. And it is made up of points three and four, whereas in this schematic it shows four and five like continuing as one wire. In reality, it comes out. And four comes out and is tied to this third post. Also tied to this third post is five, which is the first lead of the voice call assembly that then comes in and then comes out to six and ties back into here. So what you have is 3 to 4 is the humbucker, 5 and 6 are the voice coil, and what they don't show you on here is that there's a third post that's not have anything to do with the secondary winding of the audio output transformer. It's just physically there as a tie point. And so what they do is they just bring this out and tie that to there and bring this out and tie that to there. And that's how come you get four wires looking like it comes out of three posts on the output transformer, but you don't see that here at all. So that's what's going on. Hope that helps you guys if you haven't seen it before. And uh, so what I've got is I've got the two leads that show where the humbucker and the uh, line from the uh, voice coil come together. I just clipped them together. I originally had them tied to this third post, but it doesn't matter. They're just as long as they're connected to each other over here. And then I've got one of the voice coil lines here and the other one comes over here and ties into red. So these are on the secondary. The primary I have hooked up to a audio generator. So we'll take a look at that here in just a minute. And then over here on the voice coil, I just have a nine volt battery hooked up. Uh, probably not the right amount of voltage that's necessary, uh, but I didn't want to turn this unit on uh, just to do this. So let's see if we can get a proof of concept here. So uh, audio generator is on and turn up the volume. If you can hear that, change the frequency. So it seems to be working. Well, the patient's starting to have really a lot of problems. This uh, capacitor is just really losing it here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this thing out and get it out of here. So I got the uh, finished up soldering the connections into the speaker. But yeah, so I think what I'm going to do is uh, throw the power to it. 